Hi again. So this is question three from set one for 2507, summer 2020. So in this particular problem, question three, we are going to apply current divider in a circuit. So for part uh, one, we have find an expression for I, A and I, B in terms of I, R, A and R, B. For part two, we just have to plug in some values for I, R, A and R, B and then calculate I, A and I, B. And for part three, we have to find the northern equivalent circuit parameters, IN and RN, and Thevenin equivalent circuit parameters, VTH and RTH, I expect, yeah. So for part one, okay, if we look at this circuit here, we can calculate the, the currents by using a current divider equation. So we can calculate this current IB here and the current IA there by just using uh, a current divider. So there's some current here I that basically goes all the way to this path here. Once it reaches this node here, because we have this resistance RA that's connected to the ground, part of the current I will flow here and part of the current will flow here. Okay, nothing will flow here, right? Because in this case, P is an open circuit. So it's like an infinite resistance so there is no current flowing through that path, okay? But how do we calculate that? So for a current div divider, basically, if we look at the circuit down here, we can calculate an equation for IA. So for IA, I will use blue here. So for IA, we have to multiply, so the current I that's flowing here, right, times the resistor that is the path that we don't want to calculate the, the current, so times RB, okay, divided by RA plus RB. So that's the equation for IA. Now for IB, it's pretty much uh, the same method, so we just take I, then we multiply now by RA, so that's the resistance here, right? Divided by RB plus RA. So remember that for a current divider, when we have like just two, two resistor here in parallel and we want to calculate the, the current for each one of the resistances, we have to multiply the current by the resistance that it's not in the path that we are actually calculating the current, right? So that's the reason we multiply by RB here on the top and RA here for IB. So it's basically kind of the opposite as a voltage divider when we used on question two, okay? So those are the two equations. Now for part two, we just need to plug in some, some values. So in that case, this current IA here becomes, so we have I equals to 10. So let me go to the right, times RB, which is 4K divided by RA, which is four plus RB, which is six. And that gives us four amperes, okay? For RB, that's equals to the same 10 amperes times the 6k that we have for RA divided by the 4k for RB plus 6k for RA and that's equals to 6 amperes. So the sum of IA plus IB should be 10 and that's the, the case, right? 4 plus 6, that's 10. Uh, but you see that because RA, so RA, it is uh, higher than RB the current that's flowing through that path is less than the current that's flowing through RB, right? IB here, it's six amperes because RB is greater than RA, so that makes sense, right? Now, for part three, we have to calculate the, the Norton um, resistance, which is the same as the Thevenin resistance. So for that case, we, in the first step, so let me just write here, So for the third step, third part. So first we have to redraw, redraw this circuit by turning off the current I. How do we turn off a, a current source? We just insert an open circuit. So the resulting circuit becomes an open circuit here 
for the current source, right? So it goes right away here. We have RB again here. Then we have RA here that goes to the ground. Okay, so I'm, it's up here, right? But I'm drawing it to the ground down here just to simplify the circuit. And that's the, the circuit, the equivalent circuit that we have for the for calculating the Thevenin and the Norton resistance. So just to remember the Thevenin resistance, it's equals to the Norton resistance. Okay, so we just have to calculate this resistance here seen at this path. So for this case, just zoom out a little bit. So for that case, we just have to calculate the parallel between RA and RB. So in our case, RTH okay, is going to be equal to RA times RB divided by RA plus RB. And remember that this resistance, Thevenin resistance, is the same as the Norton resistance. So we basically find two values here just using this first analysis. Okay. Now for for the Norton circuit, okay, we need to calculate the short circuit current. So the short circuit current, we basically turn the current uh, source on again, so it becomes this circuit here. But now we have to insert like a short circuit here, okay? And then we calculate this short circuit current, okay? Now, if you look at this circuit, because this is a short circuit here at the node P, do you agree that we would have all this current I flowing through this path, it reaches this node here, but because there is some resistance here with RA and some resistance here with RB, and there's no resistance here at this path, all the current I will flow through that short circuit. So basically RB and RA are short circuited, and then that makes our short circuit current to be equals to the current source. So in this case, IN, which is the short circuit current, right, is equals to I, which is equals to 10 amperes. So that's the Norton current. Okay, now for the Thevenin uh, voltage, we have to calculate the open circuit voltage, right? So the open circuit voltage, now we just remove this uh, note here. So in this case, we have to calculate what's the voltage seen at this node here, right? And we can calculate that by basically uh, taking the, because we know that RB and RA are in parallel here, so we take that an, as an equivalent resistance. And because there's an open circuit here, all this current I will flow through this equivalent resistance. And then the voltage applied to that equivalent resistance is the open circuit voltage, which corresponds to the Thevenin uh, voltage. So if I just redraw the circuit here with an equivalent resistance, right? So this is the equivalent resistance. We still have V here. This is the open circuit. So VTH, right? And this is the equivalent resistance. So this equivalent resistance is the parallel between RA and RB. So RA times RB divided by RA plus RB, okay? And then we just have to calculate the voltage. So the voltage is I here times REQ. So the voltage VTH, okay, is equals to I times REQ. Now, if we plug the values of RA as 4 kilo ohms and RB as 6 kilo ohms, this gives us a VTH that's equals to 10, so if you just go here, times 4 times 6 um, K here, right? So this 4 plus 6, and then remember that we have 4K, so let me let me put it like the correct form. So let me use the Ks here because in this case, 
they matter. So it's 4K times 6K divided by 4K plus 6K. Okay, so in this case, VTH is equals to 16 kilo volts. Okay. And now if you look at the if you look at the relationship, so we know that VTH or like the open circuit voltage is equals to the short circuit current times the Thevenin or the Norton equivalent, uh, the Norton equivalent resistance, right? So if we take the, the, the Norton current, or let me put like in this case here, I am in here VTH, that's the equivalence that we have, right? So if we take 10 amperes here times the Thevenin resistance, which is 1.6K, right? That should be equals to the Thevenin voltage, we, which we calculated 16 kilovolts. So this relationship here, it agrees. So if we had calculated the Norton, uh, the Norton current here and the Thevenin resistance up here, we didn't, we didn't have to use this entire circuit analysis to calculate VTH. If we know this relationship here that comes from Ohm's law, we are able to determine, to determine uh, VTH or the Thevenin voltage right away. Okay, so that's it.